This is the Making Waves Mindset Show with your hosts, Richard DiBiase and Dave Moskowitz. Learn from our journey as we share the ups and downs of being your own boss. Welcome, everyone, to another fine edition of the Making Waves Mindset Show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks. Welcome. That's a four welcomes this time. <laughs> Today is a great day. It's a beautiful day. We have to welcome everyone on every platform. A welcome for every platform. That's right. So many of you are continuing to push Dave and I to the limits, and we love it with your input, your support, and without the mindset that all of you have to be better and to be the best version of yourself, we wouldn't be here in sharing the stories of what we're doing. You may have heard the last two, one and two part series of Dave and I in our journey, but it's been incredible, and we're learning from others and what we are doing and we hope you are feeling inspired so that's right so if you are following liking us sharing the information sharing our podcast on all the different platforms make sure you subscribe if you're enjoying it subscribe share it if you're not enjoying an episode share it anyways share it with someone who might you share. you might find value someone else might find value in what we're saying and it might give somebody a an ability to make waves dream bigger and take action so welcome 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 if it's your first time listening we always have to share the reason we've do, we're doing this show That's is right. leaving the nine to five is it takes courage. It takes incredible strength and you need to have the right mindset. You need to make waves in your life and you have to take action. Exactly what Dave just said. And on the show, we collaborate all these ideas from our guests and from our journeys. And Dave and I are not experts, but we're going to share the ups and downs of that transition and more importantly, we tie it into health, wellness, life, all that fun stuff that comes with you being you and becoming an entrepreneur. So if you have any questions, let us know. You want to hear new things, let us know. But we have an exciting topic today. We do. Dave has Dave's gripes. Is that what we're calling it? <laughs> Let's call this episode Dave's gripes. Dave's it, gripes. I have. I have. Noted. So this is, this is something that there's, a, you know... I can't even put this in words sometimes. It's frustrating. I understand there is a difference in generations. I understand there's a difference in work ethic. I understand there's a difference in how your values, morals, ethics. I understand in generation to generation to generation, it changes. I understand that. I'm mature enough now at, at the young age of 40 tender age 23 <laughs> 23 i'm happy i'm happy to be 43 i'm enjoying my 40s but i'm 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 i understand that there is differences the one thing no let me take that back because we will have dave's gripes again there's multiple things that i can't stand for in people's personal values and work ethic Reliability. Reliability is probably one of the biggest things that you have to have and show other people if you want to be successful. Reliability. I've been hiring staff over the past month. General managers, people to be our flexologist, and I've interviewed people. I cannot count the amount of people that don't show up to an online Zoom interview who will tell me that they missed the time, they, their phone didn't work, they didn't charge their phone, they didn't know how to get on the website. They didn't charge their phone? These are the excuses that I'm hearing. So, so first of all, we're, we're talking about a generation. That is glued to their phone. That is that, well, not only glued to their phones, they, they grew up on technology. Yeah. Remember, folks, I grew up in a time, and I, I, I don't want to sound like, I, I feel like I sound like my father when I was younger, but that's fine because I respect my father. I grew up in a time where my first computer was a typewriter, literally a typewriter. I wrote my first um, school report on a typewriter. Why? Because computers weren't really out yet. They were very, very expensive. We couldn't afford one. So I had a typewriter, an old school typewriter. 
that was my first computer. I grew up in an age where technology was evolving fast. So I joined within that role of technology and I kept up with it. Am I an expert? No, I have, and I'll take this line from a good friend of mine, Jay. He says, I have the knowledge of just past a toaster oven. <laughs> Great line. Totally makes sense. My See, knowledge, my yeah. knowledge of, of technology is probably a bit past. It's like an air fryer right now. My, that's my technology. That's program. actually very advanced air right. fryer. Not yeah. everyone has an air fryer. This so is like I, the pager. This is like the payphone to pager part here. You're already at the whole iPhone <laughs> years down the road if you have an air fryer. Right. So there's there's certain things when someone tells you something about technology, you know it's a lie, which goes back to them being reliable. If you can't show up on time for an interview, you can't access the interview. When you have grown up in an age of technology and you know technology and you come up with excuses like, my my alarm didn't go off. I've had an iPhone since, I don't know, I think I'm on my fourth iPhone. Not once have my alarm not worked. My phone doesn't decide whether or not it's going to allow that function to happen. If I set it, it happens. There's one thing about iPhones, as long as you plug them in there, their alarm works all the time. But more importantly, you think if there was something of high level importance, I'm using importance like three times here, for a job or for something that you are wanting to do, you wouldn't have like a backup alarm. You're you're telling your spouse, you're telling a friend, hey, if I don't call you at this time, call me. So make sure I'm up. I have an interview. I have to be somewhere that's crucial. Like yeah. what happened to truly being the best version of yourself to represent the, yourself well? They, th I say they, but I, I don't want to say they because it's not, and I'm, I, do, I know, I know someone is going to come back to me and say, it's not everyone. It's not everyone. I get it. It's not everyone because there are a lot of people who are younger. There are a lot of people who are older, who are unreliable. Mm -hmm. There is a select few, you know, you pick a hundred people and there's going to be X amount of people who are reliable, unreliable. So it's not everyone. I don't want to paint everyone with the same picture, but my, th my issue here is you've applied for the position. You've put interest into it because you actually clicked apply. You've communicated back and forth and confirmed that you were going to attend the interview. And then you don't show up. No, nothing, not even, a, I'm sorry, not even a, um, Hey, can we reschedule? Nothing. Just, you don't show up. And then days later, you, you send me an email. Oh, I'm sorry. My phone didn't work or I'm sorry. The power in my house went out. So I wasn't able to connect with you terminated. days later, days later, terminated. not even terminated. Just goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah. I, I guess my work ethic is, is to the point where if you can't show me that you're reliable to show up for an interview, you want me to actually hire you and pay you and expect that you're going to show up to work. If your alarm is not going off now for the interview, what makes you think the alarm is going to go off for you to open the store? I think, yep. Dave, what's really incredible about this story that you're sharing, and again, on the Making Waves Mindset show, we're not about the Ferraris, the high-end cars and villas and, you know, talking about the greatness, that that is all you see on social media. These people rent these things. Yeah. Okay, I want to make that clear that everyone, that yes, you have successful people on there but not everyone's on it's this. A small but more it's a small percentage and people do this to show off. Dave and I are talking about the downs of transitioning from the nine to five and what it's like when you hit rock bottom as you're opening a business. And here's an example of that. I don't feel that Dave, you should even be lowering your expectations to find someone for a role. That means you have the integrity, you have the leadership, and if they want to be down here, they're lacking the maturity yeah. and the resume capacity, or they, I guarantee you, they probably lied on their resume or in some capacity to make you believe something when they couldn't even simply log in to a, you know, a, a simple verification. And this is, this is not a full zoom interview. We spoke about this before, like a phone call or that initial interview is kind of a cursory, yeah. a little bit of get to know you before that sit down is there and I'm playing. Yeah. It's just, it, you can't even lower yourself down. It's, it's just, it shows me that you don't have the want or the need for this yeah. position at all. And I'm not going to chase people for a job. Yeah. I don't, I don't, there's lots of people out there who want jobs, who are reliable. I've hired, like I said, I've hired five people already. 
and they're congratulations awesome. they're to that, Dave. yeah they're yeah, rock stars they are rock stars and it's a matter of numbers uh another friend of mine says you know it's just a matter of numbers you interview 100 you'll get one or two um which is sad right because are people wanting jobs these days? And that, that's the bigger question. I know every company out there is looking for, to hire. There isn't one company from from our old positions in 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 law enforcement to to any fast food place to any retail place. Everyone is hiring. There isn't someone that isn't hiring right now. Um, and if they're not hiring right now, they will be in the next couple months. Everyone is hiring, and and that's that's the problem right now. But then, you know, I literally. Here we go again with my literally. I gotta get this out of my There's head. There's nothing wrong with literally. I hate that word. I sound literally. like I sound like a sixteen year old girl from high school. That's when you use like. I sometimes use like a lot. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, you know, like. I digress. I I should shouldn't have to interview hundreds of people to find two. Yeah. People need jobs. Yeah. If you don't need jobs, why are you even on? LinkedIn apply or um, indeed applying. Mm -hmm. Why are you actually clicking apply? Mm -hmm. I think technology though has allowed this to happen as well. Mm -hmm. My first job, my first real job with the city of Toronto, I got hired as a security guard with the city of Toronto. I applied out of an application posting in the Toronto star classifieds, right? I used right. to view those sections. Yeah. So growing up. Yeah. So, um, I was, how'd this go? I was sitting, I remember I was sitting watching TV, being a bum. And my dad, um, at the time I was working for, I had some security jobs already. Um, and I was sitting watching TV. My dad, who read the newspaper religiously, was it Toronto Star? No, Globe and Mail. Sorry, it was a Globe and Mail. He read the newspaper religiously every Saturday morning calls me into the kitchen. I go in and he provides me the advertisement for a security guard job with the city of Toronto. Mm. Gives me the advertisement. He goes, you should apply for this. It's a good job. You're going to get hired with the city. There's a pension, blah, blah, blah. My dad, my dad was all about corporate jobs back then. Um, I said, yeah, why not? Right. It's, it, it was advertised as, as um, I think $19 an hour. Um, it was a great paying job. It was a city job. I said, yeah, why not? I'll apply. I had to mail my resume to them, put my resume together, mail it to them. And it actually took effort to, to apply fast forward to this day and age. Click. I can apply <laughs> to probably a hundred jobs in an hour Yeah. on indeed. Isn't that crazy? Even more so on <clears throat> LinkedIn, LinkedIn, LinkedIn has this option now where you apply for a job and all they do is attach your LinkedIn profile to it and your phone number. You literally, literally, you literally, you know, <laughs> it's crazy to think that because, uh, you, all you have to do, all yeah. you have to do. Yeah. is just click, 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 click. But I'm not even using LinkedIn like that. I'm not using LinkedIn as a resume display. Um, but that's interesting that it's made it so easy for people to do it that way. Mm -hmm. And they're not showing up for no, and, an interview. And so this is this is how I, I test reliability on people. I give you a phone call. If you answer my phone call, you've passed the test. I then set up a Zoom interview with you. If you show up to the Zoom interview, that's test number two. You're reliable. If you show up on time, if you show up prepared. Reliability is not just showing up to something. Reliability is a whole bunch of things. Can I trust you? I'm going to give you a job that pays X amount of dollars a year. It's going to put money in your pocket. I'm going to provide that to you and your family, that money, the enjoyment of working in this industry. And, and mind you, this is niche, right? This is not, uh, this is not a buggy worker at Loblaws, right? I don't want, I'm not diminishing it. What I'm saying is this is a niche market. You have this to is a have job that you can grow in. But no, and but you not can develop. Yeah. And not only that is you had to have a background in yes. a modality to even apply for the job. So that means you read, you read the job description. You went down the line. You said, yeah, I have that background. I can make an application to this position. So you've done the research to see that you had the background. So you've applied to it. So we're not talking about hundreds of people. 
or thousands of people who could, who could apply for this. We're talking about hundreds of people because it minimizes based on your qualifications. Even then, you then have a select few people that I would never hire. I'll never hire you. You can come knock on my door once we're open and you could say, I applied to you. What happened? I'll say to you, you weren't reliable. I'm never going to hire you. I never in my life have shown up late to an interview. I've never, I've always been prepared. I've always been on time. Old saying of, if you're 15 minutes, if you're, if you're 10 minutes early, you're late. So I had that in my head from day one. I always showed up to everything 15 minutes early. So it's funny you talk about interviewing. So I had a friend reach out to me and it's been a number of years since they've actually had to go into an interview. And I don't want to brag, but you know, Richard, you speak well, you, 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 you know what you're talking about. You have some credence to preparing people for, for things. And I'm like, okay, I'll help you out. He goes, is this like a suit and tie? Should I be wearing a suit and tie to the interview? I said, absolutely. I think you should. I think you need to show that you represent yourself well. This is a government job. Uh, you are going to be dressed like that Monday to Friday. Yep. And it's better that you look more professional than less. Yes. And it was funny because following the interview, it finishes. So how did it go? He goes, I felt great. I'm like, well, well tell me why. He goes, Especially when I left and I saw the next guy waiting, he was wearing torn jeans and like a farmer's shirt. There you go. And, uh, you know, I said, there you go. Just on that image, you have set yourself light years ahead in presentation. You were early. You came prepared. You did your homework. We worked on, you know, questions and answers and how to polish off the right type of messaging to really sell yourself because that's what you're there for. But you didn't show up in blue jeans. And you did ask me, it's fair enough because things do change. It's always better to look presentable and dress down. Yep. But that one person there wearing t tattered torn jeans yep. was just something that I said that will stick with the be that the panel board interview that you had because they know you were the one first thing in the morning. Yes. You were early and on time and next walks in that guy. Yes. Yep. You know, the you, small you, things. Yeah, you can never go wrong with being over prepared. Correct. Right. It's when you're underprepared and you're lacking something, that's when they're going to look yeah. at you. He, that person that you know that went in for that interview, <laughs> he could have said 10 things wrong, but because he was professional looking, they probably didn't even hear them. Yeah. That's exactly what I said to him. Right. They, they're, they're left they, with this amazing image of you. And now they're sitting in front of this person immediately after yep. who looks like a bum. Yes. Yeah. This and wasn't just some laborer's job. This is a very specific skilled trade. A government position right. was looking for, and this individual had the qualifications. They superseded it, and that's just it. Yeah. I, I, I had this conversation with Natalie when we were starting out in the hiring process because in my head, I am I guess I'm old school, and uh, I that's fine. I'll, I'll allow people to say I'm old school. Old school with a K? Old school with a K. Okay. But I said to her um, – when I do the in-person interview, I'm expecting them to come in in a suit and tie. And she says, you're nuts. And I said, why? I said, all my life, not one interview I've ever done uh, for any position I ever had was not within a suit and tie. Even when I applied to McDonald's, one of my first regular jobs outside of like delivering newspapers, I showed up in a shirt and tie, right? 13-year-old David, my father made me put on a shirt and tie. I yelled and screamed. I told him he was crazy. He said, put on a shirt and tie. You have to. It's an interview for McDonald's. Best thing I ever did. Why? They hired me when I was 13. Were they supposed to? The answer is no. I was supposed to be 14. They hired me. I was three months out from being 14, and the manager took a, took a risk with me, and he goes, that's fine. Let's hire you on. Isn't that amazing? Why? Because my father tied my tie for me, put me in a shirt and tie and pants and sent me in for my interview. That was my first interview. So for me in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to interview these people for jobs that I'm providing them. I want them to be professional. She goes, no, the industry's changed. She goes, you're not hiring for a police officer. You're not hiring for a law enforcement officer. You're hiring for people who are going to be in gym attire 90% of 99 or 100% of the time when they're working for you. Why do you need to see them in a suit and tie? I said, that's fine. I understand that. But they should be presentable. 
And she goes, yes, definitely they should be presentable. So in my mind, I, I said, okay, well, my GM should be presentable when they come in. And if they come in with a t-shirt, I'm going to, I'm going to be a little turned off about that. Luckily, the GM that I ended up hiring came in with a, a button up shirt, collar, nicely pressed. He was, he looked like, uh, as we say in the, in the Yiddish Jewish culture, he looked like a mensch, uh, which is like a gentleman. And then all the flexologists, the people who are flexing, the, those people who I hired, the ones that I hired were, were nicely dressed. They weren't wearing suits and ties and stuff like that, but they weren't wearing a torn t-shirt. They weren't wearing ratted old clothes. They were clean, nicely pressed or nicely outfitted um, shirts. And, I'll have to give Nat credit for that. Um, yeah. With my friend, that was the thing. I said, it's a government position. It was for the province. It was very specific. I said, you know, looking at what was required, yes. But now hearing kind of what you're saying on this point, okay, that's fair enough. Yeah, gym attire. But you know what professional gym athletic attire and yeah. looking clean and well-shaved and, you know, for a guy or hair as a girl, everything's yeah. done up. It's You need to, because you're going to be the face for the brand. Yes. So that's fine. You need to adapt. I get it. But the messaging here is... Be prepared. Yeah, be reliable. But be it, reliable. these are these are all issues with reliability. I have another thing, and which brought me over the basically spilled my coffee cup this morning. So Dave's grapes part two. Dave's grapes part two. So, it, but it goes back to reliability, and it's on a personal note. It's not. It's not really business related, but it is, and I'll I'll explain why. So, um, today I had a whole bunch of things planned to do other than this podcast. So I decided um, I've been looking for someone to walk. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know our subscribers, I have two beautiful puppies. And um, I was looking for a walker that's local within the area to watch our puppies um, during the day, you know, if I have meetings, stuff like that. So I f we we ended up finding, uh, um, I, I won't go into too much detail because I don't want to smudge somebody's career, but um we found somebody on a app called Rover. I've heard of this. So it's a it's an app where dog walkers like Uber almost. So you go onto this app, you find people, you talk to them, communicate through them, and they're all dog walkers, dog sitters, boarders, a whole bunch of people who take care of dogs, cats, animals. So we ended up finding somebody. We communicated with them. We ended up setting up a meet and greet. We met with them. Fantastic. Ended up going meeting with them, had a great 45 minute conversation, got to know them. I was like, yeah, we can trust this person. Reliability test one passed, right? You passed test one. So I said, I said, okay, let me do test two on them because not only am I entrusting them with our two dogs, which we hold dear and Your true babies. to our hearts. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to entrust that they, I want to know where they're taking them and I want to know where they live and stuff like that. So let's, do a test day and give it, give them the dogs early in the morning and pick them up at late at night. Sort of like a test, right? See if, if, if she enjoyed their being with them and if we enjoyed her service for the day. So last night, a couple of days ago, we confirmed everything. I sent her a text. She sent me back. What time are you going to be there? I said seven in the morning. She says, okay, text me when you get there. Uh, I'll come down and grab them. You can come up to my uh, apartment and see. I said, no, it's okay. Uh, for you know, I'll meet you down in the lobby. Okay, fantastic. So that was yesterday. This morning, go for my walk, take the pups with me, get their food ready, everything. I head over there. It's only about 10 minutes away. So send her text. Good morning. How are you? Should be there in about 10 minutes. No reply. That was the first first reliability test in my head. I'm like, mm, okay, maybe you're not just on your phone yet. Maybe you're jumping in the shower, getting ready, whatever. I There's always, know. there could be something, right? There's always something. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, fine. No worries. I still have a 10 minute walk, make my way over there. 10 minutes goes by. I end up showing up. Hey, it's me. I'm downstairs waiting for you. When you're ready, I'm down here. No rush. Another 10 minutes go by. And you know, you on the iPhones, when you're sending iPhone to iPhone, you know, you can see when somebody it's delivered red, right? You can see that little stuff. It doesn't say red. It just says delivered. So I'm like, okay, so she, they have, she hasn't opened her phone yet. So 
So it's 10. now seven o'clock, 10 after seven. It's now, it's now just after seven. Okay. And I'm thinking she's not coming down. She's not coming down. So I'm standing outside. It's a bit cool this morning. So the security guard lets me in to sit in the lobby. So I sit in the lobby and I, and I'm waiting, 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 715, 720, nothing. So I said, sent her a text message. I say, I'm going to read it. Oh, no. You know what? I deleted it all because I don't want to even communicate with her anymore. Um, I wrote, uh, it's now 720 um, or 715, I think I, I wrote. Um, unfortunately, I hope you're okay. So I said that right away. I hope you're okay because maybe something happened. I give mm-hmm. people the benefit of the doubt. I said, I hope you're okay. Um, I don't think this is going to work. We waited for you. I uh, I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Perfect. Still no reply. Still not read. Walk back home. Finish my walk with, with the pups. Get them all settled in. Get back home. Start doing some work. 7.45. Message comes in. I get a message. Message says, I'm so sorry. My alarm. I was okay. <laughs> my alarm didn't go off. I hope I didn't ruin your day. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So my tie back into business is, A, this this is her business. She runs a business. She is a dog walker slash boarder. She portrays herself as being a dog walker slash boarder. She makes an income off being a dog walker slash boarder. This is a business. You've just told a client that you are not reliable. By all means, not reliable. You're going to tell me, I would have been, you know what I would have been happy with? If she would have said to me, I'm sorry. If she would have said, I'm sorry. My, I went out late last night. I slept in. I I didn't hear my alarm. I, I apologize. And I hope we can make this work. Please give me another chance. You know, whatever, whatever said to me. Anything but a lie. Don't lie. Tell me your alarm didn't go off. Because I, I need to call Apple. I need to call Apple and tell the them defect. they have an, they have a major defect with all Recall. their phones. Recall their phones right now because their alarm systems don't work when you put them on. Reliability test number two failed. Are you... No, I know it's not the point of the program, but I just want to ask, is there a way that you can actually leave some independent feedback for other individuals going that she has a recall warranty issue with her phone, which may (laughs) cause you and your dog to wait in a warm lobby while the blistery winter snow hits? You know, I'm, I'm not big on uh, besmudging people's careers. Uh, based on my bad experience, I'm I've never been the yelper who sits there and says this food was shit. Have you don't ever wrong? don't ever go to this restaurant. We found a hair in my food. Like I'm not that kind of guy. Like I I'm I don't besmudge people for mistakes. You made a mistake. That's fine. But what you've done is you've ruined our relationship, and I can't trust you. And you are not reliable to me. So that's what I do. Personally, if you if I go use a service and I'm not happy with the service, you'll just never see me as a customer. And anyone who asks me, I'll tell them. I'll say, don't go here. Don't use this. Don't do this. Right. And I'll tell them my experience and whether they choose to do it based on what I've told them, that's fine. But I'm not about leaving comments on the Internet and and putting out things there for for everyone to see. I'm just not about that. Okay. I don't I don't feel it necessary to be. Uh, a spokesperson for everyone on her service because maybe it was a personality clash between me and that person, right? Maybe it was just my bad experience, my karma that char- that turned it into a bad experience and not everyone else. Because you read those comments and you're like, I've been to that restaurant a thousand times, never had an issue, right? So I think I'm of the opinion that everyone has influence on the outcomes of things that happen. And who am I to then be smudge that business and and give them a bad rating on their, you know, Google or Yelp or whatever it is or Rover so that no one else will ever use them. Uh, You know, everyone deserves the right to make money. So go make money. Just it won't be from me. So 
you know, in closing, Dave, so for our listeners, when Dave mentioned that, hey, here's a topic, we we got to we got to discuss this. Dave's gripes. It's on the top of my mind. It was in that three every three posts, I put up like a quote and I'm like, you know what? This is this is perfect. Like we need to create a liability reliability quote. Yes. And so I drafted something that we can all learn from without a strong foundation. One cannot become reliable when you secure your foundation. Everyone around you will become stable themselves. That's right. So if this dog walker had a secure foundation, they yes. might have some stable friendships around them. If it was that night out of partying, they might might have gone, hey, you got a very important job tomorrow. You yeah. got a business. So let's take care of each other. Sure. So um, when, when I was in policing, there was a uh, very senior individual in my organization very early on, very early on since deceased. And one of his big things was if you say you're going to do something, do it. And that ties into not only your integrity, your accountability, but your reliability. And, you know, one of my frustrations I'm going to tie in is, you know, we're all not perfect. However, there are times when Dave and I will always go above and beyond. And it's never, it never, it never comes back the same way with certain people. And yes. I want people to be aware that when you become very reliable, sometimes people are going to take advantage of that. So be prepared and have your, you know, your laser sights out that when you are that strong foundation, other people then become so dependent on you mm -hmm. that they are now cutting corners themselves. Maintain a strong, stable foundation with like-minded buildings around you so you don't crumble under the weight of somebody else's decisions. And um, that is a true life story that impacted me many a times, but the quote was very accurate. If you're going to say something, do it. That's right. If you're not going to commit to it, don't do it. Don't That's say right. it. So yep. fair enough. Good words. Dave, where can our listeners find you? Uh, you find me out and about looking for reliable dog walkers. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody knows reliable dog walkers <laughs> in the city of Toronto, Canada, I, I we Dave. have, we have a great walker. Um, she's out in the beaches. She's fantastic. She's just is it the because, beach or the beach? No, I'm oh, I think it's the beaches now. <laughs> beach. No, I think it's the beach. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, Crystal, she's awesome. Uh, Bowser, shout out Bugs. to Crystal. Yeah, shout out to her, and maybe we'll have her on the show one day because she's running her she own should. business. And she's very successful. The problem she is should. she's successful, and that's a problem for us because she's always gets booked up. Aren't um, you a but, VIP customer, original OG? You know, for Oakley we are, but for Frank, he's the new guy to the to the field. So little fluff ball, Frank. yeah. Anyways, yes, you can find me on Instagram and LinkedIn, David Moskowitz or David A. Moskowitz and or come on down once we're yes. open to Stretch Lab. Shout out to Stretch Lab, Stretch Lab, Stretch Lab. Come get a stretch. You'll feel better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can find yours truly on LinkedIn and Instagram, Richard DiBiase. Continue to like, share the show. You know, it's not a lot that we ask on here. Dave and I come and do this voluntarily. We we try to just share the gospel of greatness that we're experiencing, including Dave's, Dave's gripes, the downs, Dave's gripes. or Richard's rants. Richard's rants and Dave's gripes. You know, Love it. Uh, but uh, if you do see value, please share. And we're always willing to hear from you. We are bringing back people. We get a lot of comments and stuff and a lot of things we kind of space out to. So don't feel upset that you didn't hear something. It's been three months. Yeah, well, we're, we we bank up episodes. We spread things out. We try to add in our guests in between. So if you know someone who <laughs> left nine to five, got into business, uh, you know what, Dave? Richard's rants right now. Uh oh, here we go. Okay, I'm on, a we... I'm on the spur track. That was my phrase. Actually, I was listening to our other recording and you're like, oh, I've never heard that. That was my that was mine. I'm taking credit for that. That was mine back in the day. Um, there are so many incredible people I follow and I know who are in the nine to five or have entrepreneurial ambitions and they're just not wanting to come on the show. I'm not ready. I don't feel I'm in a position. I said you are in a position. You know why? Because you've taken action, you are doing something that other people are not, and other people can learn from you. It doesn't matter whether the bank account is in the red or in the black. It doesn't matter. The point is you are doing something, and you're in this transitional journey from leaving the safety and securities of a paycheck and alleged pension, and then moving on to a whole different freedom-loving lifestyle where you can impact and, and yeah. watch so many people around you grow. So don't be afraid when you hear me reaching out, there are people I keep pressing on like, 
there's nothing wrong with just starting. You've already done so much so far. Dave and I had the embarrassments of starting with nothing other than my wife and I having a real estate investing company. But still, it was like this long process. Just do it. Just, just come on it. out. Just you got, it. Yeah, you bring value that might light the fire in somebody else and you're not seeing it. But if you know of somebody like that or others who are way ahead decades of Dave and I and are flying in private spaceships to the moon and back, Elon, Robert Kiyosaki, anybody, come on, reach out. That's right. Uh, we'd love to. We'd love to speak to them and talk about their mindset. So, until next time, continue to dream bigger, make waves, and take action. All right, we'll talk to you on our next episode.